So, as, as you all know, I am Arcadia from Ixi Studios, and today I am with the lovely Miss Messy Mia. Hey! How are you today? Good, yourself? Um, my first question for you would be, um, everybody has um, something that got into the geek or um, nerd culture, so what is like a, the fandom or something that got you into the culture, or where you get your inspirations from? Oh goodness, I think I started getting into fandoms when I was like five and into like Pokemon, Sailor Moon, and Card Captors, so that's probably like my introduction to it. I remember playing like pretend with Sailor Moon and things like that, so I started role playing at the age of seven. <laughs> Nice. And uh, my next question for you is, um, how long have you been cosplaying and what got you into cosplay itself? I started in 2009, so I'm about at seven years of cosplay now. I started, I discovered cosplay by going to a local convention one day. I'd heard the day of of the convention. I was 14 at the time. It was 2007. I arrived on the spot and then I saw people dressed up as characters and it clicked in my head that that's something you can do. And then I decided I wanted to do the thing, so but two years later I finally grew the courage to dress up myself and make my own costumes. So that's how it all started. And you uh, work with uh, Detailed Illusion, who my boyfriend actually got the chance to interview a while back, and you actually go by a team, Detailed Mess. So how did that uh, partnership come, come to life? All right, so we had met in, oh my, I want to say 2013? At Otakthon's Masquerade, and then we both discovered we were from Ottawa. He was just moved back into Ottawa. I had also just moved back to, because I was studying Montreal, moved back to Ottawa, home base. And we're like, we should start hanging out, which we did, and discovered we liked many same things. And then we were like, holy, we want to do WCS, let's do it together. And then we got stuck together, and it's one of the greatest friendships. Nice. Now, with this being a convention, I'm pretty sure you have quite a few uh, cosplays lined up. So, uh, what are your cosplays uh, for this weekend, and what are your inspirations behind the cosplays? All right, so in the end, I brought five. Whether I wear all five of them is another story entirely. Um, the five I brought was Terra from Final Fantasy VI, uh, Haruka from Idolmaster, um, an Ion skin, which is a pretty, pretty dress I wanted to do with friends. Um, what was the other one? Oh yes, Kendapa from RG Veda and a Sailor Venus redesign done by Hannah Alexander. They kind of all came about for different reasons. For Terra, I really wanted to start getting into Final Fantasy costumes and Nikki really wanted to do Kefka and I was like, well, I would like to do Terra. So that pushed me towards that. That was for Japan. Um, Haruka is from Idol Master and it's basically one of my friends basically got a group of us and tried to create the entire set of 13 girls in matching outfits. So I was one of those 13 girls. So that was a lot of fun. So that was really a group effort. So like bringing all these people together and working together to bring something to life, which is a lot of fun. Um, the Ion one, it was my roommate. Um, I'm looking at you, Calamity. Calamity and Birdie are my roommates. Um, Birdie is Calamity's lovely, lovely cat who puts lovely fur on everything. Um, but Calamity basically is always showing me pictures of pretty things. Is like, join me, join me in these cosplay groups. And that's always what happens. So she ends up adding me to more and more things and giving me mod motivation and like inspiration to do all kinds of different things. So that's a lot of what's going to co be coming up for new stuff is her fault. Um, and then Kendapa was, I wanted to do more clamp things. It was a pretty dress. I wanted to do more pretty dresses. And Kendapa was really, like, I really liked her character. I don't want to do spoilers for people who haven't read RG Beta. It's been 20 years, guys. You should have known by now the spoilers. Um, but it, I basically, I really like the character. I really like the design. I want to bring that to life. And the last one was Sailor Venus, uh, Hannah Alexander design. It was a lot of things at the same time. I wanted to do more Sailor Moon stuff but didn't necessarily want to do the classical Sailor Moon outfits because I've, I've already done like Sailor Jupiter's basic outfit, I've done Sailor Moon's basic outfit, I've done Sa Super Sailor Moon's outfit, I've done Princess Serenity's dress like twice. And I was like, I want to do something different. So there was this fan design done by Hannah Alexander and it was this really pretty gown for Sailor Venus. But it was also a challenge for me because it had um, a very deep V-neck, which was very revealing for me for the first time. So it was challenge my, challenging myself to go out of my comfort zone when it comes to costuming. So it was both a, I like this pretty dress and I want to challenge myself and do something that I'm not usually comfortable with doing and bring that to life.
Now that actually brings me into my next question because my next question is you have numerous cosplays in, under your belt. Yeah. But uh, if you had to pick one that is your favorite and then the one that was the most challenging, would you say the Sailor Venus one was the most challenging or what would be the most challenging? Um, the most challenging, because Sailor Venus was challenging in and of its own, but the most challenging to me was will always be my Goddess Madoka costume. And part of the reason was because I started it at a time that I still still didn't have a full grasp of how to do things and like how to do structured garments, how to do petticoats and hoop skirts and all these things. There, it was such a huge challenge because I was doing all these things I didn't know about. And it's like, it really pushed me to make something big and impressive. And I, I easily poured so many hours into my that costume. So that one is probably my most challenging one. My favorite one, it really depends on which day you ask me. Because sometimes my favorite one is my prettiest one, which is really difficult to wear. Which is things like Sailor Venus or Terra and so on. Or Sakura. But other days, my favorite costumes is my most comfortable costumes. So it's like, I like to be able to put my costume in less than half an hour. That would be nice. So sometimes it's things like, I've done Princess Serenity, Neo Queen Serenity a few times. And in a way, they're my favorite because they're just like... There's, they're very comfortable. I find it very easy to wear. It it has that right balance of like that pretty I really like, but without that difficulty of wearing it that other costumes have. So Princess Ready has a close place in my heart. And um, of course, everybody has different ways of putting together costumes. Some people like buy, uh, commission, or make. So, what is your method for putting together a cosplay? It really depends on the projects because sometimes I'm doing something just for fun, shits and giggles. I'm sorry, am I allowed to swear? Yes. Okay, good. Um, sometimes when I'm doing something very, very casual, I, I'll, I'll partially buy, I'll modify. I have a few bought costumes in my closet, but other times, there's a lot of times I just want to make things. So there's my Sailor Venus, my Kandapa, my Terra, all these kinds of costumes. Like at least 80% of my wardrobe when it comes to cosplay stuff is fully handmade. But there's times where I'm just like, I just want to have fun. I just want to cosplay with some friends for a day or two. It's like a few group costumes. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to pour 80 hours into making a costume or 60 hours into making a costume. I'll just buy it, not struggle with it, things like that. Um, it really depends what I want from the costume. It's a little bit like I will spend much more time into the detail work if I want to put it into a competition. So it's like, depending on what I want to do with that costume and how I want it to look and slash what I want from the craftsmanship, my approach is very different. So it like varies a lot for me. Nice. And uh, speaking of competitions, you mentioned you're going to be doing some judging earlier. Yes. So, and also, um, if I remember correctly, you have a couple of master levels under your, under your belt, a couple of journeymen. So, um, do you do, still do a lot of competing a lot, or are you more doing judging nowadays? Um, recently, I've been doing more judging than competing. Not so much because I don't want to compete, but it was also, I, I'm full, studying full-time. I have a lot on my plate in my everyday life on top, and then I have co co cosplay on top. So I decided to, for a certain amount of time, to put cos... not cosplay itself, but cosplay competitions on the side because it takes a lot of time and energy. It's definitely something I want to pick up again because I want to do a Talk Thons Masquerade if I can fit it in my schedule this year and things like that because there's something very different about judging a masquerade and participating because judging is, I like it also because it's like contributing to the community. It's like I can give back because I remember enjoying masquerades and you can't make masquerades happen if you don't have all these staff members on hand, whether it's the director or the den parents or the judges. It's like you need so many people to be able to bring it together staff-wise. So I always like to be able to give some of... They have given me so much, I like to give back. Um, but I do definitely want to start competing again because it's something I definitely miss. I like being on stage and looking pretty and trying to wow the people in the crowd. Nice. And that ties into my next question because I was going to ask... Um of course, every cosplayer hears this question, but at the end of the day, what does cosplay mean to you? Oh, goodness. What is cosplay to me? Cosplay to me is being able to take a step out of everyday life in many ways. It's a way... It's also community... Okay, oh, goodness. I'm sorry. I'm just like, there's so many things that cosplay is to me. First, it's and foremost it's a community. I've made a lot of really good friends, whether it's Nick or Calamity, who is now my roommate. Um, I have so many, many friends that I've made through the community, friends I would never have met in normal circumstances because we're in different fields of studies, we live in different cities. We, 
I never would have met these people without cosplay. So there's a huge part that's community and friendship for me. Another part for me is definitely being able to do something I would never do in real, like in everyday life. So it's like, I love pretty, pretty dresses and like all these kinds of things, but I wouldn't wear those pretty, pretty dresses in everyday life. I like being comfortable and wearing really easy things to wear in everyday life. So it l lets me take a step away from everyday life at times, which is really nice. It helps bring a little bit of life into my everyday life. Nice. And you've also said um, a lot of like what's good about the cos what's good about cosplaying. But what would you say is like a downside and maybe some of the things that prevent people from wanting to go into cosplay? Um, there are some lot of things. When it comes to preventing people to come into the community, it's really tough to say because sometimes it's just as simple as it's not quite their thing, um, which is fair enough. It's not for everyone cosplay, but I find sometimes it's like it feels a little bit daunting at the beginning. So sometimes, mm -hmm. like let's face it, the people we see most in the cosplay community are the famous cosplayers or the cosplays that have a lot of like are very notorious so it's kind of like well I can't cosplay look at Yaya Han's costume and it's like well we don't expect you to start with Yaya Han's costume at all we very few of us achieve that and it's okay you can it's that that can be very daunting um I think the biggest thing I have an issue not so much an issue Um, that I feel I have to give a warning very, very often to people starting off in the cosplay community is your health is more important than cosplay. Cosplay is a part of your life. It is not your entire life. Because I see a lot of people sweat shopping for weeks, barely sleeping, barely socializing, having difficulty making ends meet to do cosplay. And I want, I, I just want to say take a step back Enjoy cosplay, but don't let it take over your life. And that's definitely something I see all the time. And sometimes I have to make myself stop making stuff and be like, hey, I've just spent 40 hours at work and 40 hours on costumes this week and barely slept. I need to take a step back and actually take care of myself and enjoy life in other ways than just cosplay. Now, you mentioned uh, yeah, yeah, Han is here, of course, and you have some other big cosplayers that you're going to be like... Um, About being a guest with, so how do you feel about about that? Like to be like among some like big names, like someone from Japan, a couple from Japan, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, it's daunting because I don't feel like I'm at their level at all, <laughs> and I'm not saying that to be like I I am a poor, sorry, unknown cosplayer. That's not that's not what I'm saying. I mean, I don't have as much experience as them, and I don't have. As like I look at their craft and I'm always like drooling over what they're making, mm -hmm. and I do feel like a small name. Although that's not something I dislike because I kind of like having being able to take that step away from the cosplay community because I can end a convention and be like, "Bye guys, you won't hear from me for like two weeks because I'm tired." Mm -hmm. While uh, a lot of the some of the other cosplay guests are full on professional cosplayers, so they can never, well not never, but it's much more difficult. Leave it, like being able to put aside the cosplay community for a little while. It's a little bit daunting, it's a little bit scary, but it's exciting. It's really exciting and I'm really, really, really honored because I, I'm still surprised that Adam North would want me. <laughs> I'm not saying that to say that condescending to myself, guys. I'm just like, um, um, maybe a hundred people have heard about me here. <laughs> No, a lot of people have heard of you, but also in your uh, since you started cosplaying, uh, would you say there um, you have a couple maybe experiences that you've had, like maybe meeting a cosplayer that inspires you, or like a guest, or maybe just a convention convention girl just came up to you and said something that just really stuck with you? Oh God, it's hard on the spot to think of like individual experiences. I find. I've definitely had times where it's like I've cosplayed from unknown things and that moment where someone comes to see you and is so happy to see you and it's just like oh my god you're cosplaying from this series that no one knows so those are always moments that are precious to my heart other moments that are precious to my heart is whenever I have children that are like fawning over me so it's like whenever I have like a Disney print like my one Disney princess outfit has been Elsa and I've had like little Elsa's come with me it's like you're the real Elsa and I'm the real Elsa and we're real Elsa's together and I would go like with them and greet other princesses and things like that so those are things like that and when it comes to cosplayers 
Oh, goodness. I find not so much live experiences, but, like, online seeing, like, cosplayers. And it's, like, I definitely... Um, it's Vicious Cosplay. Vicious Cosplay is someone I follow, and I like her a lot because she she embraces all kinds of things in cosplay, and it really helps me refine myself to see cosplayers like that because it's like cosplayers embrace all the sides of cosplay and I really appreciate that when I, I see that because it's something I really try to push and be like cosplay is not just craft cosplay is not just this very specific thing cosplay is all kinds of things that can be changed and varied for different people's tastes so it's like if what you like is the dressing up but not the crafting that's cool you're still cosplaying if what you like is making stuff like perfectly and only making one costume a year who cares that's cosplay you're having fun and i really appreciate those cosplayers that embrace all those things and are like it's cool do all the things let's all be a community together and i really appreciate cosplayers that can bring that to life i also find the other thing with cosplaying is sometimes uh cosplayers uh people um people don't realize that cosplaying is not just uh putting on a costume or something cosplay is a whole personality and persona so it's also like even coming up with a creative name or something like is there, a, is there a story about, like, uh, behind, like, uh, the name deta Detailed Mess or, like, um, messy me Miss Messy Mia? Miss Messy Mia started long ago when I started a YouTube channel before I was even had a cosplay persona, and I just kept messy me Miss Messy Mia for everything. Miss Messy Mia is basically my way of working. Um, my mom always called me Miss Mia. So it kind of stuck with me, um, and my initials are MM, so I kind of wanted to go with that like double M or triple M in my, in my name. Mm -hmm. I want to keep Mia because it's easy, it's easy when people are addressing me and things like that, because I've, I have definitely had friends like Detailed Illusion, who people would come see him and be like, hey, Detailed, and he's like, it's Nick. <laughs> Just call me Nick, which is why he like changed it to Detailed Illusion Nick Cosplay. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was mainly because Miss Messy Mia was like, I've always been a messy person when I'm working. My sh workshop is a complete disaster, and the way I work is just so messy. I definitely have cringed at my own seam lines that are super messy because I would like stitch and restitch and stitch and restitch and stitch rip, and it's horrible. But so my style is very messy, so I just embrace that um, because I've, as much as I, I try to like push things, I've never been an ultra perfectionist, so it, there's always a tad bit of messiness to everything I do. Um, and Detailed Mess was kind of meshing ourselves together because mm -hmm. Nick is all about detail work and like perfection and things like that while I'm the like slightly messier one. So it's like bringing those two slightly opposing things together. So it was really trying to embrace both of our personalities within our team mate. Team you, mate. Guys, you guys have created a very awesome uh, team together. Now, uh, my last final question. Uh, a lot of people here in Anime North will see you. Yes. Unfortunately, though, there are some people who, uh, due to uh, work being meanies or anything else, couldn't make it. We feel sorry for you guys. Oh, we're really sorry, guys. I, yeah. I hope everything will be fine in whatever situation you are at. And know that we will have all the fun for you. I, too, will only be here today and sun Sunday due to like, prior commitments. But uh, my final question would be... Um, for anyone who wants to know more information about your work or detailed work, where would people go to find that information? Um, I'm on Facebook, Miss Messy Mia. It's one of the easiest ways to find me. I'm also on Tumblr under Miss Messy Mia. And Instagram, again, Miss Messy Mia. As for Nick, I tag him on a lot of things, so that's one way to find him. Um, but he goes by Nick Cosplay Detailed Illusion on Facebook. So that's a good way to find us. And a lot of those, the Facebook is kind of our hub. And then we like branch out to the other things. So we'll have links to other social medias if you prefer other social medias. Thank you so much. Thank you.